Hey folks, welcome back to Adam's Workshop. So today's my birthday. I was not planning on making a video today, but I did want to play with my scope. So I was thinking, you know, what I could do with it. <clears throat> I've never hooked a scope up to a four wheeler or any ATV for that matter. So this is a 2000 Quadmaster 500 Suzuki. And I don't know, I just wanna get a few waveforms hooked up to it. Maybe um, we'll do ignition waveforms. Um, I don't know, we'll mess around with it, see what we can do, just cause I've never done it before. And I figure I might as well bring y'all along. Okay, we've got the secondary ignition probe set up on the spark plug wire and we'll connect it on the scope. Um, so if you notice, the SATO, if you bought one or if you're looking at it online, it comes with the clear caps and they're not tethered. They're not tethered to the scope and they're clear. So I don't know, I see me losing those right away. So I took these ones off of my ATO and put them on here. Okay, so we're connected to the four-wheeler using a capacitive secondary ignition probe directly around the spark plug wire. And the other wire going to ground. So we'll go ahead and fire it up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back out. Now I'm in roll. This is gonna give me more time on the screen so I'll go ahead and turn it on. As soon as I turn the key, you'll see a little bit of oscillation and then I'm gonna fire it up. We'll get a little on the screen and we'll give it three throttle bursts. And key off and we'll stop it. Now we have our waveform. Now we can look at it. We can hit zoom right here. Let's see, can you see that? Right here we can hit zoom. Another thing when you, I like this, when you hit the zoom button, it lights up green. Same here with channel. Channel one's the only one turned on, it's lit up. If I turn channel two on, it'll light up. So you know whichever channel is on just from it being lit. That's pretty neat, I like that. So anyway, you can hit zoom and now you can go to the beginning, all the way to the beginning, all the way out. You can see right here is where we turn the key on. You can scroll through all the way, all the way to the end. And then you can get to wherever you want in the capture and zoom in on your waveform. So we'll turn, I'm gonna turn the zoom off. I'm gonna go here towards the beginning. And see what kind of waveform we got. Like I said, I've never hooked a scope up to a four wheeler before. Oh. I've never hooked a scope up to a four wheeler before. Um, so this is a first for me. I imagine it should look the same. It's an ignition um, waveform. It's all doing the same thing. Okay. Okay, you can see right here, this is where the coil's gonna turn on. This line going up is your firing line. A lot of information in that line. And then over here, this is your burn line. Also your um, spark line. And then you're gonna have the turn off oscill oscillation. Now there should be 
a turn on oscillation over on this side as well, showing when the coil turns on. I'm not seeing it. That's kind of weird. There, there should be a little oscillation over on this side where it turns on. Then you get your fire line and your spark line, which is your burn time. Now you can measure all this. You can measure this by bringing out your cursors. You can just press the cursors button right here and use this joystick. I like to put number one right at ground. So right here we're at zero volts on number one. And then number two is what I'll use for my measurement. And then it'll subtract the two. So if we go up to the peak on the firing line, if it's not perfect, bear with me guys. I just turned 45 today, today. And I uh, hate to admit, I think I might start needing, might need glasses and having trouble Stuff up close is kind of blurry. I'm always having to back way up. Um, so I keep magnifying glasses at my lab table and by my chair in the living room. So anyway, now you can see our firing line. Do, 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 do. You can read that right there. So we're looking at, what is that? Can you read that? 1 kilovolt looks like 1 kilovolt so what is that 1000 volts? Yeah, 1 kilovolt. Um real quick, I'm not sure I'm not sure if I showed it in the menu here well secondary ignition we should have and then the probe i am using is attenuated at 10,000 so we want to hit 10,000 right here oh wait 10x for 10,000 yeah i believe that's right um, that way we get the correct numbers for our readings, our measurements. Um, I do have a low pass filter on that just cleans the signal up, um, takes away some just hash and ugliness. It just cleans it up and we are on DC. Um, if this waveform, say you were doing a waste spark ignition system, you're going to have some plugs, the waveform is going to go positive and others, it's gonna go negative. Instead of switching your probe around, you can just hit the invert button. Or if you put the probe on backwards, which I did in this case, I had to hit the invert button, otherwise it would be going negative. So nice feature there, invert button. On that, when I first got my ATO automotive scope, they did not have the invert button under the channel menu. That's one thing I really like about Mixig, I contacted them through email, told them how, you know, nice it is to have the invert options that it that it comes in handy, such as waste spark system, or, you know, say you just put your probe on wrong and the polarity is backwards, instead of going back and switching it, you can just hit invert. Well, Mixig got together with their techs, they made it happen, they had me do a firmware update, and now we have the invert option. And everybody that had one at that time, whenever they did the next firmware update, it updated them. Super neat. Um, I shared in a video to let everybody know. Um, so anyway, one kilovolt. Now, I'm not going to go into breaking down how to diagnose this waveform. That's not what this video is about. There's a lot of videos out there about that. Scanner Danner makes a good video. Um, I will tell you there's a lot of information here. So just as one example, you can see our firing line, it goes up, then it comes back down, and then you have this little oscillation. If that shot back up all the way up here or real high up next to the firing line, that would tell us right there we have a no, a no fuel misfire. 
So we can have a problem with an injector, or in this case, it'd be a carburetor. Um, a lot of information. If our firing line went way up off the screen, like to a ridiculous number, that would tell us right there that we have an open plug wire. Um, you can tell if you have a shorted plug wire, if um, the firing line So if the firing line like came down and then just went over a little and then came down again, like it had a tail, it came over before it came down and had your oscillations, that could be a sign of a shorted plug wire. So you can tell if you have no fuel misfires, shorted plug wires, open plug wires, um, bad spark plugs, you can tell like in the fire, in the, firing line here, not the firing line, the spark line, by the burn time, you can bring up your vertical cursors. Oh, that's another thing. So when the cursors first come on, you'll have Y1, press it, it goes to Y2, press it again. It grabs one Y1 and Y2. And now when you move the joystick or your finger, Oh, I'm sorry, so you can grab two fingers here, that's right, and you can drag it across the screen. So we can drag it over here to the burn line. And you can measure the burn line. And like I said, this isn't gonna be a video. I don't, I don't wanna go too far into diagnosing right here. I'm just showing you what the scope, ten, scope, ten, scope can do. So if you see on here, Y1, Y2, and that triangle in Y is for the horizontal, and then you have the X for the vertical. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not even on the screen. And you have the X for the vertical. So what is that, 6.2 seconds? Or the difference of the two would be 950 microseconds, it looks like. Super neat easy to do all we did here was clamp a probe around the spark wire and we can get a lot of information if we had a misfire um, you could turn your cursors off you can zoom back out what cursor do i have on here there we go you can zoom back out if you remember we gave it gas on that note, what we're looking at, like when we're looking for a no fuel misfire, you're probably not gonna see it during idle. So you wanna give it some gas, which we did, and we'll be able to see like right here, we did it three times. Yeah, you can zoom in like this too, just like you would on your phone. Or maybe you can't. I thought you could. <laughs> anyway, we'll zoom in. Look at that. That's kind of wonky. Trying to see where. So it looks like right here, I gave it throttle once, twice three times and we can go to any one of them and zoom in on the cycles now this is a four-wheeler so it only has one cylinder otherwise we can get all of our cylinders on here this might actually be getting a little bit too much fuel when I bought this four-wheeler, gas would come out of the, the hole on the bottom for like the overflow for the gas. They had a bottle connected up to it. And I, I bought a new carburetor. It wasn't real expensive. I actually bought a cheap one off of Amazon. 
and connected it. And maybe I could tune it a little, little bit more. Maybe I could tune it a little bit better because it looks like, looks like it might be getting a little, maybe a little too much fuel. Um, so anyway, you can connect your current. Also, um, I can't get to too much on the four-wheeler without pulling stuff apart. So I think that's all I'm gonna do in this video. Okay, say we wanted to save this capture right here. We can hit our save button. We have a screenshot of it. And now, yep, wrong button, wrong button. I meant to hit reference right here. Open our menu, press right there. I deleted them all just so this would be easier to see. The one at the top is the last one. So if we had a whole list here, the one on the top would be the most recent one. All right, so now, let's try this, the files. Go to tablet scope, smart, reference. This one right here. Oh, I didn't mean to press it. Hold it, go up here. We can delete it, we can share it, or we can go to rename. And we'll go secondary, hit OK. Back to our home screen, back to the scope, open up our reference, and there it is. Now it's saved under secondary. Secondary, and it has the date and time. Press that. Oh, and now it's on channel reference one. What's neat, if we want to zoom in or out, we can zoom in on just our reference waveform. We can zoom in on it, zoom out on it, or we can tap there for channel one, do the same with channel one. You could press right here, go to channel one or R1. R1, now we have full control of it. Zoom in, zoom out. Channel one, we have control of channel one. Zoom in, zoom out. Turn that off there. Or you can do the same here if you press, well, okay, you press channel. I'm sorry, whatever channel you want. In this case, channel one, we press channel. Now we press channel. Now we have control of it. We can zoom in, we can zoom out. Or you can go to press reference. And now we have control of this one. We can move it on the around on the screen however we want. We can zoom in and we can zoom out. Zoom out on both of them. Oh, wrong way. Zoom in on that one. And they will line up. Press reference. There you go. I think y'all get the picture. All right, I'm not gonna make them line up perfectly, but you get the idea. All right, I think I'm gonna end that for right now. Um, maybe I'll pull the truck in. I just did some work on it and we'll look at some fuel injectors. All right, this is Adam's Workshop, signing out. Thanks for stopping by.